But, um, in in oh, spiritual terms, when people can seem to to uh, manifest things like Sai Baba with uh, race bracelets or jewelry, uh, or people can seem to bend spoons uh, or do things like that, you know, that's just a sign of the power of the mind. Even though it's kind of a small little sign, bending a spoon, considering that the mind is capable of make, making up a whole cosmos uh, when the ego is there. Bending a spoon is not uh, such a big deal, but for human beings it seems like a big deal. Uh, some of you might have saw the movie Powder, uh, where he starts having spoons dance on a table, and these bullies are just absolutely terrified. Their mouths drop when these spoons start dancing around, and he's using some of his uh, psychokinesis power. In this movie, uh, the main character starts to realize that he has these powers to tune, as they say, to manipulate uh, the physical form with the mind. And only the dark ones think that they're the only ones that are advanced enough to do this because they've they've made the whole world with their dark thoughts. So it's very much like the Course saying, the ego projected out this world. They've made the dark world and they're doing experiments with the inhabitants to try to find out what makes them tick. Uh, the ego of course doesn't know anything, so it's always doing mad experiments. Uh, to basically to find the soul, but, but the ego doesn't know what the soul is, because the soul is love. So it's just doing these mad experiments, and everyone who believes in these dark ones uh, basically is, is kept under this mesmerism of this uh, dark planet. And basically another thing important is about manifesting is you know, when people get into spiritual circles and they watch a movie like The Secret, they go, wow, it's amazing that I would have the power. Even manifesting in this world is, is kind of a big deal. If you look at, the, let's say, six billion people, and you look at the poverty that seems to be in this world, people can't even get enough food to eat, and basically, you know, there are pockets of what we would call material wealth, but basically this is a world of lack where there's just not enough to go around, not enough food even, in this day and age. And so if somebody actually found out that they had the power to tune, uh, or to manifest, you know, this would be a big deal. Imagine if, if mass consciousness started to realize the power of manifesting, what that would do to world hunger. Uh, you know, just manifest some, some greens or some, you don't have to, why grow the food? Uh, when you can just manifest it in your hand and eat it, that would kind of bring an end to world hunger. So, the ego and the dark ones in this movie, they don't want anybody, any of the inhabitants, to, to know that they have this power. And you might say that even in this world, you know, the, that there seem to be those that, that have the political power, the ones that are ruling, and they don't necessarily want it shared with everybody because therefore they lose the control. And the dark ones don't want people to know how to tune. They're, they're actually shocked when they find that a normal human being actually has the power to tune. Uh, because that's a huge threat to their status quo. You know, their whole world could be threatened, you know, if this one should start to discover that not only does he have the power to tune, but he has the power to to forgive or to remake the entire world, to turn the upside down world right side up back to the light, which all of us have. And that's the one thing the ego has done everything to do, to keep the mind believing that it's weak, it's helpless. If you look at how most people in the world spend their lives, they spend their lives working. And, and Jesus talks about that in the Course, he says, you spend your time doing meaningless things, uh, to, to earn these little green paper strips and metal discs, to buy things that you don't even need and don't even want, and then you turn around and you do it all again. For years, it's just, he, in Jesus' terms, it's like, it's bizarre that you would spend your divine essence uh, distracted uh, doing meaningless things for little paper strips that you don't even need and want to buy more meaningless things and just kind of use them up, throw them away and buy some more. It's like a, it's almost like a farce. And yet, in this world, 
it's no farce at all. That's, that's just the way things are. So in this movie, dark ones kind of inject the, during nighttime dreams, they inject uh, the people with this uh, kind of code uh, fluid and basically uh, that keeps everybody just stuck into the dream. They just shift the roles around. Oh, you'll be a, a rich person, a poor person, a wife, a husband, a daughter, whatever, and then they just keep mixing the memories around and all the memories have guilt with them. And so everybody just keeps exchanging the guilt memories and nobody wakes up because they just get stuck with more guilt injections. So, uh, there's a, a character in here who plays the scientist and he basically understands psychology but he's, he's been threatened by the Dark Ones so he's working for them. But the main character um, starts to wake up and the, the scientist wants to help him. And so, at some point in the movie, the scientist is going to make this syringe that contains a reinterpretation of all of the dark memories. And that's really, that syringe is like the Holy Spirit. Even though the main character is quite resistant to getting any more syringes uh, and is resistant. And that's really helpful too in this movie because that's going to be a total reinterpretation of all the memories. And only the Holy Spirit, Jeshua, can do that for us. There's, there's no, nothing part of the ego system that can, can show everything from a helpful perspective. Like you were blessed at every single event, even though you missed the blessing. Mm -hmm. You interpreted with the ego that, oh, there was victimization, and I was harmed, and they held me back, and they cheated me, when really those were just ego interpretations, jealousy, and so forth. So, um, the dark ones are going to try to, to go after the, the, the man that's waking up and, and the syringe is going to help reinterpret things. And even in the end, uh, the, the main character has to go and try to find truth in form. Uh, in this world, Shell Beach is symbolic of the real world. So he's always trying to make it to Shell Beach, a memory deep in his mind of a brighter day when things were brighter, uh, the characters can't even remember um, that when it got so dark, you know, they just become so accustomed to the darkness that they forgot the light. And he keeps trying to make it to Shell Beach. So Shell Beach is a symbol of the real world or the happy dream in this world that the main character is trying to reach. And then um, the, there's a woman that plays his wife and um, uh, she seems to have uh, committed adultery. That's how the main character first got so angry and kind of lost it and, and went searching for more because he got so angry at her having an affair. In this movie, I think it's the only major motion picture I've ever seen where they actually teach Jesus' forgiveness, the way Jesus teaches it in the Course. I think I've seen thousands of movies, but they actually have a scene in prison where she's talking about all of her guilt for this adultery she committed and he's able to reach across and say, you didn't do it. <laughs> Imagine being able to have look at a partner in the eye when they're just shaking and trembling in guilt and telling you <coughs> that they've, they've done this terrible thing and you, from a perspective much higher, are able to actually look them in the eye and say, you didn't do it. It's just somebody that wants you to think that you did it. So the ego wants you to think that you, you made mistakes in form, but actually just believing in the ego was the mistake. And all of the behaviors weren't really guilt-inducing, they were just reflections of this misperception. So it's spectacular in the sense that I have never seen a motion picture where you actually have a scene that portrays what the Course teaches. Forgive your brother for what he did not do. That's deep. How do you make a motion picture that even teaches that? They did it here in Australia. They came up with, with a movie that teaches, forgive your brother for what he did not do. So in that sense, even though this may seem to be, to most critics, a horror movie, it's packed full of opportunities to, to actually have the experience of true forgiveness.